To all pastors, theology students, and saints who have attended today's Shincheonji online seminar, I am pleased to see you. My name is Im Song Bin from the Matia tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I will be the host for today's event. I sincerely thank those who have come to listen to this seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. The world is showing much enthusiasm for the seminar that everyone is watching right now. The reason is because this seminar is proclaiming the content that a believer must know and keep if they have the hope in the Kingdom of Heaven. I hope today, too, will be a precious time where you can find the way to the Kingdom of Heaven through the Word. Now, with the same heart, let us pray. To our thankful and gracious Father God, Firstly, we sincerely thank you for allowing Shincheonji Online Seminar this year and the grace of leading us through this precious word. Through the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, please allow this time for the saints who thirst for righteousness from each country across the world, listen to the word of truth and realize your will and purpose and become the family of the whole world who realize this era and guide them to the way they must go inside the Word. Please allow us to become one in God and the Bible. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic of today's seminar, Lesson 22, is titled The Law of the New Covenant That Must Be Kept. In every era, God made the covenant with the chosen people that He chose, and He gave blessings to those who kept that covenant. Then, what is a covenant that believers who believe in God and Jesus today must keep, and how can we keep it? I hope this is a time when you can receive these answers clearly through the word that is testified today. Then let us welcome instructor Romino from Cheonan Church of Matias tribe who will deliver the word. All pastors, theology students, and saints who have the hope in the kingdom of heaven and eternal life, it is really good to see you. I am No Min Ho, the instructor of Cheonan Church of Matias tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We sincerely welcome and thank all those who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. The title of the word that we will meditate together today is Intermediate Lesson 22, The Law of the New Covenant That Must Be Kept. The reference chapter is Hebrews 8. Let's have the time to realize about the law of the new covenant through this time. So, how is this word that we will look into today be related to us who are the believers? I hope you can get the certain answers about God's will by listening to today's lecture. Firstly, I'll briefly introduce about the main reference chapter. Hebrews 8, the main chapter for today, is written about 2,000 years ago from today by Apostle Paul. The key point of this chapter is about the law of the new covenant that must be kept and the blessings for those who keep it. Through today's lesson, you'll find the answers to why God made the covenant with the people and what is the covenant that we must keep? And how can we keep it? And what are the blessings for those who keep it? We will have the time to find these answers. I'll first briefly explain about Hebrews 8, 1-6, then we will look into the topic of the covenant. 
Then, let us read Hebrews 8, 1 till 6. The point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary, that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build a tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to death as the covenant of which he is meditator is superior to the old one and it is founded on the better promises. When we see the content of the reference chapter, it talks about a high priest offering gifts following the physical law of the first covenant. It is said they serve at a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. But it also said there is a high priest who sat at the right hand of the throne in heaven, right? This high priest, when we see Hebrews 3 verse 1, is referring to Jesus who is the high priest. And when we see verse 6 of the reference chapter, Jesus is said to be a mediator of a covenant that is founded on better promises. The better promise is talking about the new covenant that Jesus made 2,000 years ago. In other words, it is talking about Jesus, who is the high priest, and also the mediator of the new covenant. Now, what we need to look more closely is about this mediator of the covenant. Then, wouldn't this mean that there is a subject whom this covenant is made with? Here, the word covenant means also a promise. The promise in the Bible is not a promise made between men, but it is a promise between God and the people. Then, for God, what happened for him to make the covenant with the people? To know about this, I'll firstly mention about God's position and situation through the history of the Bible. God is a creator who created the people and the creations of heaven and earth. And Adam, who was created like that, received the inheritance of all things, and God made a covenant with them. However, the enemy of God, the evil spirit, the devil, deceived Adam to take away all things which God created and made it into his position. And eventually, Adam broke the covenant made with God and was deceived by the serpent and sinned, for he ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This, in other words, was Adam's betrayal. Through this, the covenant with God was broken. Seeing what happened after Adam sinned, in Genesis 6, the wickedness filled the whole earth, and God, who is good, cannot be together with the sinners, so eventually left this world. As a result, death and pain came onto the people. Then, who has been ruling over this world that God left? Yes, that is right. It is God's enemy, the evil spirit, Satan the devil, who has been reigning. Everyone, what will be God's heart who had to leave because of Adam, whom he created, was deceived by the serpent, and had everything that he had created stolen? How bad would it be 
that he said he lamented for creating men. Then, God wants to find back the whole world that was taken from him and wants to restore all things as before, right? And that is why he's been working for 6,000 years. Then, what will be the objective of God who's been working for 6,000 years? Firstly, it is to get rid of the first heaven and first earth that has existed since the time of Adam sinned and until now, which is the corrupted traditional churches, and to create God's new kingdom and new people. And second is to capture and lock up the dragon Satan, the devil who took the whole world away and made all nations fall. And third is for God and the spiritual kingdom of heaven being one with God's new kingdom and new people on this earth as it is in heaven so that there is a marriage where the spiritual world and the physical become one and for God to reign. To fulfill this objective, God has chosen a pastor and the chosen pastor in every era and made a covenant with them. Out of the covenants, the most representative one is the covenant that appears in Exodus 19, 5-6. Let us read Exodus 19, 5-6 first. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Exodus 19, 5-6 is the content of the covenant that God made with the physical Israelites. It is said that if they keep this covenant, they will become a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The physical Israel needed to keep the covenant. Then what was the very first covenant that they needed to keep? Yes, that is right. The Ten Commandments are the law that they must keep, and the very first commandment of the Ten appears in Exodus 20, verse 3, which is to serve no other gods before me. However, the chosen people of physical Israel served Gentile gods at the time of Solomon, and by that, they broke the covenant. Just as seen in Hosea 6 verse 7, it says, As at Adam, they have broke the covenant and were unfaithful to God, right? This, in other words, it is a betrayal. Because the chosen people of physical Israel did not keep the covenant made with God like this, as a result, there became something wrong with the covenant. By having the covenant broken like this, God made a promise to create a new thing through the prophet Jeremiah. Then, what is this creation of a new thing? The creation of a new thing is not the first heaven and first earth that are descendants of the genes of the sin Adam, but it is a promise that God will create the new kingdom and new people the new heaven and new earth. This promise is fulfilled in Revelation 21 through the first coming and second coming. God promised two things for the creation of this new thing. What were these two? First is promising the sowing of two kinds of seed in Jeremiah 31 verse 27. And second, is making a new covenant in Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Now then, through whom were these two kinds of promise fulfilled? What was prophesied in Jeremiah 31 is fulfilled after 600 years it was proclaimed when God came to Jesus and fulfilled everything that was promised. At the time of Jesus' first coming, when we see Matthew 13, the two kinds of seed have been sowed in his field, 
In other words, Jesus is filled as promised. And in Luke 22, on the night of the Passover, Jesus made the new covenant with his blood. With this, the two prophecies for the creation of a new thing in Jeremiah 31 was fulfilled at the time of Jesus' first coming. Then, what is the content of the new covenant that Jesus made with his blood on the night of the Passover? Let us read Luke 22, 14 till 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. When we go and read Luke 22, verse 16, it is said that this Passover meal will not be eaten again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. In other words, the food of Passover can be eaten when God's kingdom is fulfilled. This is the content of the new covenant. Then what is the Passover food that is eaten in God's kingdom? When we look at the time of Moses in Exodus 12, they ate the flesh and blood of the physical lamb, and that was a way to be saved and receive life. And at the time of the first coming, Jesus said in John 6, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. In other words, they will live forever. Then, does it mean we literally have to drink Jesus' blood and eat his flesh? No, right. Jesus spoke these things by figuratively referring to the event of Passover at the time of Moses and also referred himself as the Lamb. Then, the blood and flesh of the Lamb, which is the Passover food at the time of the first coming, is the word of life that Jesus gives, who is the Lamb. And to eat Jesus' blood and flesh is to hear and realize Jesus' words. Then the blood Jesus, the Lamb, shed at the night of the Passover, at the time of the first coming, we would need to know where it is contained for us to eat Jesus' blood and keep the new covenant right. Everyone, do you know where Jesus' blood is in? The blood Jesus, the Lamb, shed on the night of the Passover, at the time of the first coming, is in Revelation. Therefore, the book in which Jesus' blood is in is Revelation. And you were to keep the new covenant, Luke 22, then you must know and keep the revelation. Then in order to learn how to keep the new covenant, let us see the words of Hebrews 8, 7 to 13. Now when we see Hebrews 8 verse 7, it is said, for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. This means there was something wrong with the first covenant, right? And that is why establishing the second one, the new covenant, was promised. It is also written that it will not be like the covenant God made with their forefathers when he took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, right? 
then it means this is not the first covenant made with the physical Israelites. That is why it is not the previous first covenant, but it is the new covenant. And it is said to have the law of this new covenant in our minds and write them in our hearts. Then he will be our God and we will be his people. The law of the new covenant in today's main reference is revelation. Even the judges of the world, only those who have the statutory law in their hearts can make a verdict of the judgment. Also, the people of the world are judged according to those laws. Just like that, if the law of the new covenant is said to be revelation, then only those who have revelation written in their hearts are able to judge the world, isn't it? This means that at the time when the new covenant is fulfilled, people will be judged with revelation being the standard of the judgment. That is why, if we are the believers who have the hope in the kingdom of heaven and eternal life, we must know revelation. If we do not know revelation, what will happen? Will God be able to bless those who simply say, I believe, even if they don't know about Revelation? Let us check through the Bible. Let us read Revelation 22:18-19. I want everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the place described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. As we see in Revelation 22, 18-19, the one who adds or takes words away from Revelation is the one who does not keep the new covenant and will receive the plagues and cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That is why we must know and keep revelation. As these are important verses that explain why we must know revelation, I will explain this once again. In Revelation 22, 18-19, it says, that the one who adds or takes words away from Revelation will receive the plagues and not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then, we must be the ones who know and keep Revelation and keep the new covenant. Then, what will be the way to keep the new covenant that is this important? The way to keep the new covenant is written as engraving the law of God in our hearts and minds. Therefore, it is to record these words of revelation into our hearts and minds. In Revelation, it is recorded as being sealed with God's law. Being sealed means to engrave the word of the Bible into the hearts and minds as if being stamped. As one is sealed with God's law like this, as it says in verse 11, No longer will they say, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. This means from general congregation members to pastors, everyone will know the word of God. Then, I would like to ask a question. There are numerous traditional churches in the world, but is there any denomination that has, from the least of the congregation member to the highest pastor, who all know Revelation? Could pastors please answer this? It says Revelation is the law of God. Has there been a denomination in the whole world where all the congregation members who entered into the church and also its highest pastors who all mastered Revelation. Can you please say about this? But in our Shincheonji church, all congregation members must learn Revelation and even take an exam. And if they do not receive 90% in the exam, they cannot enter into the church. God has said that to those people who are sealed with the law of God, 
God will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. And he said, By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. Like this, the first one that was established, in other words, the first covenant, which was not kept by the physical Israelites, became obsolete and aging, and that is why the new covenant was established. Then, we will now continue on and learn about the physical reality of those people who keep the new covenant when revelation is fulfilled. Regarding the physical reality of those people who keep the new covenant, it is precisely recorded in the prophecy of the New Testament for Gospels and Revelation. Firstly, among the prophecy of the New Testament for Gospels, we will learn about Matthew 8, 11-12. As we see in Matthew 8, 11-12, the subjects of the kingdom, thus the traditional churches, will be thrown outside into the darkness. And those who are harvested and gathered from the east and west will take their places in the kingdom of heaven. The subjects of the kingdom who are thrown outside here, the traditional churches, are those who have not kept the new covenant, and those who have been harvested from east and west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven are those who have kept the new covenant. And their physical reality is recorded well in Revelation 6 and 7. When we see in today's main reference of Hebrews 8 verse 13, it says, By calling this covenant new, the first one is obsolete and aging, and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. The subjects of the kingdom and the traditional churches that did not keep the new covenant become corrupted and obsolete and come to an end by receiving the judgment as written in Revelation 6. And in Revelation 7, there are those who are harvested from the east and west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven. They are the people who are born of the seed of God. They are the fruits who are ripened from the seed that was sowed at the time of the first coming, and they are harvested in Revelation 14. And these people who are harvested are sealed with the revealed word in Revelation 7, and the twelve tribes, 144,000, are created. Who are these harvested and sealed twelve tribes, 144,000? In order to find this out, let's read Revelation 5, 9-10. And they sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased man for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. As we see in Revelation 5, 9-10, these harvested and sealed twelve tribes, 144,000, are the kingdom and priest purchased by the blood of Jesus. Also, after the 144,000 are sealed, countless multitude of people will come out from the Great Tribulation, and these people are called the multitude in white who have received the atonement of sin through the blood of Jesus in Revelation 7 verse 14. Also, in Revelation 12, verse 11, the male child and his brothers fight and overcome the group of the dragon, and the weapon that is used by those who are victorious is the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and their word of testimony. As such, the blood of Jesus was shed for the 144,000 priests and the people of the multitude of white of the twelve tribes. Only the 144,000 and the multitude of white of the twelve tribes will be able to eat the blood of Jesus. Therefore, the words of Luke 22 which says, 
that the words of Jesus' blood will not be eaten again until it finds fulfillment in the Father's kingdom becomes fulfilled at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. What is found to be fulfilled in the Father's kingdom is the twelve tribes, kingdom, and priests. Those who eat the words of Jesus' blood here are the twelve tribes, 144,000, and the multitude and white. They are the people who eat the blood of Jesus according to Luke 22 and receive the effect of the blood. Everyone, can you see the forehead of these priests who have their hands up? The word seal, meaning a stamp, is engraved on their forehead, isn't it? Realizing the word and recording it in the hearts and minds are figuratively spoken as being sealed on the forehead. I hope that you will also be sealed like this. Now, these sealed priests and the molten white are the physical reality of those who keep the new covenant. Then, let's find out what is the blessing that these people who keep the new covenant will receive. In Revelation 1 verse 3, it is recorded that the blessed are those who keep the words of the new covenant, Revelation. They are the people who are sealed with God's law, Revelation, as written in Hebrews 8, 10 to 12. Also, it is written that God will not remember their sins anymore. Therefore, isn't this receiving the atonement of sin? Also, in Revelation 1 verse 5, it is written that they have been freed from sin through the blood of Jesus. As God and Jesus are together with these people who have been freed from sin like this, the place that Jesus has prepared as written in John 14, thus, the holy city, New Jerusalem, of Revelation 21, will come to the people who have kept the new covenant. It is written in Matthew 25 that this holy city, the kingdom of heaven, will be inherited by the sheep-like believers. These sheep-like believers are those who have kept the new covenant. Also, in Revelation 21, 1-4, it is written that the kingdom of heaven, which is the holy city, New Jerusalem, and God will come down to New Heaven, New Earth, Shincheonji. This Shincheonji is God's new kingdom and new people, 12 tribes, 144,000, and the multitude and white who have kept the new covenant. Shincheonji, 12 tribes, become the priests and the people who receive the atonement of sin by keeping the new covenant and inherit the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Now, once again, Shincheonji, 12 tribes, become the kingdom and priests who receive the atonement of sin by keeping the new covenant and will receive the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as an inheritance. To our beloved pastors, theology students, and saints, shouldn't all believers who have the hope of kingdom of heaven and eternal life check who they are according to the Bible, and always reflect whether I have been created according to the Bible. I pray that we will reflect upon ourselves on today's words and keep the new covenant and all receive the blessings. At Shincheonji, 12 tribes, there is a promised pastor who received and ate the open book of Revelation, who has seen and heard the events of the entire Book of Revelation. And this promised pastor is testifying plainly the prophecy and the fulfillment of Revelation. And that is why the harvested, sealed, twelve tribes of Shincheonji saints are able to engrave the law of the new covenant, Revelation, into their hearts and minds. This is keeping the new covenant and sealing the law of Revelation into the hearts and minds. Like this, in our Shincheonji, from the least to the greatest, in other words, from a person who just entered the church to the highest pastor 
Everyone has mastered the Book of Revelation. Therefore, our Shincheonji become the physical reality of those who kept the New Covenant. Also in Shincheonji 12 tribes, the promised pastor and the 12 tribe leaders who have mastered the New Covenant revelation are testifying the prophecy and even its physical fulfillment from Revelation 1 to 22 to the whole world according to the principles of 5 W's and 1 H. Also, this has been reported to all the nations in this global village and numerous pastors and saints around the world who heard this are acknowledging that this word that is testified is the word of truth and entering into MOUs with Shincheonji. Even at this time, through the elementary, intermediate, and advanced courses taught from the mission center under Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the New Testament revelations, physical fulfillment and reality, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and its fulfillment are being testified to the whole world. And countless number of people are streaming and learning this word. Then why is it out of the whole world that only Shincheonji 12 tribes is a place that can master and testify the new covenant revelation? The reason is because the promised pastor who received the revealed word is here, and because it is a Shincheonji 12 tribes that is created according to the promise of the new covenant revelation, and that is why it is able to master the new covenant revelation and testify it. Dear respected pastors, theology students, and saints, I hope you will hear the words of the New Covenant Revelation and keep the New Covenant and become the family of heaven who receive the blessings. This will be the conclusion of today's word. Firstly, the law of the New Covenant that must be kept is revelation. Therefore, Writing the New Covenant revelation into the hearts and mind is to keep the New Covenant. Secondly, what is the result of those who keep the New Covenant and those who do not keep it? Those who keep the New Covenant have their sins no longer remembered as they have sealed the law of God revelation into their hearts and minds. Therefore, as their sins are toned through the blood of Jesus, they can enter the kingdom of heaven. Then what happens to those who do not keep the new covenant? As they have added and subtracted from God's law revelation, they will go to hell. Thirdly, who are the physical realities of those who keep the law of the new covenant and receive the blessing? They are the new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes, 144,000, and the multitude in white. And their physical reality is the Shincheonji 12 tribes who have been harvested and sealed at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. I sincerely pray that you will seal the words of the new covenant revelation in your hearts and minds in God's kingdom, Shincheonji, that has been created according to the Bible keep the new covenant, and enter into the hope of kingdom of heaven and eternal life. In the next lesson, there will be an instructor who is much more competent than me who will testify the words of the intermediate lesson 23, the elementary teachings, and the place of maturity. I hope we can all attend and have a graceful time. Lastly, with the meaning that we are one in God and Jesus, we will shout, we are one and complete. We are one in God beyond race, nationality, and religion. We are one. Let us all pray. Dear thankful and gracious Father God, I sincerely thank you for your grace of guiding the pastors, theology students, and believers who believe in God and Jesus who listen to the Shincheonji online seminar. The words of Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter are being testified plainly according to the principles of 5 W's and 1 H. Therefore, please allow the eyes to see, ears to hear, and open hearts 
so we can be all guided to your kingdom through the revealed word and live together with you. Until we come to hear the word again next time, please allow spiritual and physical health and your protection. I pray it in the most gracious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for listening well until the end. Therefore, if today is a time of the Lord's second coming when revelation is fulfilled, what will be the elementary teachings? And what will be the mature teachings, which is the teachings about righteousness? What is really important is whether the place I belong to have the elementary teachings or the mature teachings. Shouldn't we check? As you saw in the video, next lesson will be Intermediate Lesson 23, The Elementary Teachings and the Place of Maturity. The time will be the same as today, 10 a.m. Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, is being broadcasted through the Shincheonji Church of Jesus official YouTube channel to the whole world being translated into 24 languages. And there are many great news from many different denominations around the world as they wish to be one with Shincheonji. I hope you will attend the next seminar and become more enlightened with deeper realizations. In addition to what you heard today, if you have any questions or curiosities about Shincheonji Church of Jesus or the Word, please contact the representative numbers of the tribe you see on the screen. We will be happy to kindly guide you and answer your questions. Now, with the prayer that our Lord has taught us, we will end all the orders of today's seminar. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever. Amen. We sincerely thank all the family of God who are together with us today.